Let us pray. O God, the maker and redeemer of all mankind, grant us with thy servant Queen Elizabeth and all the faithful departed the sure benefits of thy Son's saving passion and glorious resurrection that in the last day when all things are gathered up in Christ, we may with them enjoy the fullness of thy promises. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food. On this mountain, he will remove the morning veil covering all peoples and the shroud enwrapping all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord will wipe away the tears from every cheek. He will take away his people's shame everywhere on earth, for the Lord has said so. That day it will be said, See, this is our God in whom we hoped for salvation. The Lord is the one in whom we hoped. We exult and we rejoice that he has saved us. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. <clears throat> Hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us, and then while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life. But more than that, 
we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. This is the word of the Lord. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The centurion who was standing in front of him had seen how he had died, and he said, In truth, this man was a son of God. When the Sabbath was over, Mary of Magdala, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bought spices with which to go and anoint him. And very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, they went to the tomb, just as the sun was rising. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us? from the entrance to the tomb. But when they looked, they could see that the stone, which was very big, had been rolled back. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man in a white robe, seated on the right-hand side, and they were struck with amazement. But he said to them, There is no need for alarm. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See, here is the place where they laid him. 
This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. History teaches us that we sometimes need saving from ourselves, from our recklessness or our greed. God sent into the world a unique person, neither a philosopher nor a general, important though they are, but a saviour with the power to forgive. Those are words from the Queen's Christmas speech in 2011. One of the most notable things about our late Queen, <coughs> which so many people commented upon, and which was evident from the way in which she led her life was her strong Christian faith. It was admired by people of all faiths and none. It was one of the most important building blocks, if you will, of what made her up as a person and gave her the values and outlook that she had. In her later years, we have all watched our beloved Queen slow down a little as the years took their toll. She increasingly handed on tasks and responsibilities to others as age had its effect. And yet I sense that she felt somehow freer in that Indian summer of her life to speak more directly about her experience of faith in Jesus Christ, especially at moments like her Christmas speeches. It never sounded preachy or exclusive or divisive. It simply came from the heart. It was her uncomplicated reflection on what it meant to live a life seeking to follow the teachings of Christ and under his dominion. At the heart of the matter, there lies a very simple truth. It's not possible to be a monarch and not believe in God. <coughs> For the gift of monarchy lies in the fact that the monarch herself experiences that role as a calling, as a vocation from God. Yes, it may come with wealth and prestige and honour. But monarchy, monarchy is fundamentally an act of service. It acknowledges that true authority, real power and actual dominion come from God not from opinion polls or elections or referendums, important though they are, not from military might or economic strength, important though they are, but from God. 
And that power and authority are to be exercised for the good of the whole human family, created in God's image. At the end of this life, we will, every one of us, have to make the same journey that the Queen has just made from this world to the next. No matter what our station in life, no matter how wealthy we are or influential we have been, no matter how ordinary or inconsequential we might feel, we all share the same fate and will have to give an account for our actions to the same God. Now there's one job I'm very glad I don't have at the moment, and that is being a newspaper cartoonist. How on earth, at a time of sadness and mourning, does one create a daily newspaper cartoon about the death of a queen without upsetting people? It strikes me as remarkably difficult. <coughs> And yet I saw a fascinating cartoon the other day produced by The Guardian, a newspaper not exactly known, shall we say, for supine royal loyalty. It depicted a new Elizabeth Line train hurtling into a tunnel. And on board was the unmistakable solitary figure of the Queen. At the mouth of the tunnel that the train was disappearing into, a blaze of light and glory as it passed from this world into whatever awaits us in the next. I thought, to be honest, it was a masterstroke of an image, respectful and affectionate, and yet thought-provoking and truthful. It pointed very accurately to the fact that whatever else is happening constitutionally this week, we have witnessed in the death of our Queen the passing of one individual from this world into eternity. But there's just one thing that that cartoonist didn't get quite right, I think. For as our Queen makes her journey from this world, she does not enter an unknown beyond. I think she knew very well exactly what awaited her, or rather, who awaited her. For her life of faith and service prepared the Queen for that moment when her Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, called her home and bid her enter his heavenly kingdom. She knew him in this life and will have embraced him even more deeply in the next. We ponder today in the life of the Queen a remarkable life lived for others, a life of service and sacrifice, of duty and dedication, of faith and fidelity. And if ever someone deserved to hear those words of Jesus, it is surely the Queen as she meets her Lord. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter now into the joy of your Master. Amen.
Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we bless your holy name for all that you have given us and through the life of your servant, Queen Elizabeth. Hear our prayers as we pray for her soul and commend her to your keeping. We give you thanks for Queen Elizabeth's love of family and her gift of friendship, for her devotion to this nation and to the nations of the Commonwealth for her grace, dignity, and courtesy, and for her generosity and love of life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We praise you for the courage that she showed in testing times, the depth of her Christian faith, and the witness she bore to it in word and deed. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. We bring to you the needs of the world and pray for peace where there is war. For the nations of the Commonwealth which Queen Elizabeth led and for the common good of all her subjects. Lord, hear us. Lord, us. We pray for our Sovereign Lord the King and all the royal family that you might reassure them of your continuing love and lift them from the depths of grief into the peace and light of your presence. We ask Our Lady who reigns as Queen of Heaven to join her prayers with ours as we pray for the repose of the soul of our departed Sovereign. Hail, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. God of mercy, entrusting into your hands the soul of Elizabeth, our departed Queen, and rejoicing in our communion with all your faithful people, we make our petitions through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let your heart let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The peace of the risen Lord be always with you. And with our
Pray that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the We beseech thee, O Lord, mercifully to regard these our oblations, which we offer unto thee for the soul of thy departed servant Elizabeth, our Queen, so she may obtain of thee the reward of everlasting life. Through the same Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with my spirit. Lift up your hearts. Thanks unto the Lord our God. It is we who are to do. It is very meet, right, and abundant duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto Thee, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, thine only Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks, because through him thou hast given us the hope of a glorious resurrection, so that although death comes to us all, Yet we rejoice in the promise of eternal life. For to thy faithful people life is changed, not taken away. And when our mortal flesh is laid aside, an everlasting dwelling place is made ready for us in heaven. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we lord and magnify thy glorious name, forever praising thee and singing.
accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in this same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of his kingdom, and offering this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ thy Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ is Christ is Accept through him, our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of thy divine majesty, renew us by thy Holy Spirit, inspire us with thy love, and together with Jonathan, our Bishop, and Sarah, Bishop of London, in communion with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, the Apostles, the Martyrs, and all the saints, Unite us in the body of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. As our Saviour Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are poor to say.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that thy departed servant, Queen Elizabeth, for whom we have celebrated this, this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Absolve, O Lord, and we beseech thee, the soul of thy servant from every bond of sin, that in the glory of the resurrection she may be raised up amid thy saints and elect unto newness of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord, and may she rest in peace. Amen.
O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, by whom kings reign and princes decree justice, we remember before thee our late sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, in thankfulness for the blessings which thou hast bestowed upon us by her reign, for the example she set of unwearied devotion to duty, for her steadfast courage, and for the love and loyalty borne to her by a great family of peoples in all parts of the world. And we beseech thee to give us grace, that having these thy mercies in remembrance, we may with one heart and one mind set forward the welfare of this land and hasten the coming of thy kingdom of peace and goodwill among men. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies and giver of all comfort, deal graciously, we pray thee, with all who mourn, the members of the royal family, this nation and all nations of the commonwealth, that casting every care on thee, we may know the consolation of thy love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who rulest over all the kingdoms of the world and disposest of them according to thy good pleasure, and who hast now called thy servant, our sovereign Lord, the King, to the throne of this realm, let thy wisdom be his guide, let thine arms strengthen him, let justice, truth and holiness, let peace and love and all those virtues that adorn the Christian profession flourish in his days. Direct all his counsels and endeavours to thy glory and the welfare of his people, and give us grace to obey him cheerfully and willingly for conscience' sake, that neither our sinful passions nor our private interests may disappoint his cares for the public good. Let him always possess the hearts of his people, that they may never be wanting in honour to his person and dutiful submission to his authority. Let his reign be long and prosperous and crown him with immortality in the life to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 